Welcome to JD in the Subsea. Um, this is Sub Paul Paint 5. And in this video, um, I'm going to be using oil paints three different ways. Um, at this point right now, what we're doing is we're taking little dabs of paint and we're brushing it as thin as we can to spread it all over the surface, uh, starting with darker colors. And then we're going to be mixing uh, lighter colors into it. Um, one of the best ways, things about uh, using oil paints this way is you don't have to pre-mix um, on your palette or anything like that. You just take little dabs um, and keep smoothing it out. Um, at this stage, we're not using any thinners. Uh, you'll notice I got some lighter color that I'm putting on right there. Um, I'm also playing with my cameras a little bit. Um, this first part will be with camera one. Um, yeah, here we are, we're adding a little yellow, yellow green, and we're just mixing it in directly on um, to the spots we'd already done. Uh, this will feather in, you can make natural um, lighting, or not lighting, um, fading effects. Um, I really like using this method uh, of getting more and more liking it because uh, while this doesn't take a extremely long time to dry at this point, um, it does take longer. So if you, you know, if you, you do it, you know, you're working on this and then, uh, you know, the next day you take a look at it and you go, oh, well, hey, this could be a little bit more then you just add a little bit more. Everything's still workable. Um, I've sped this up quite a bit. Um, this part of the uh, project did take a little bit of time, um, but it's totally worth it. Um, yeah, in this one, I'm using some yellow uh, and mix in. It's kind of hard to tell a little bit from the camera. One of the reasons I'm playing with the cameras and videoing um, is to get used to how all this stuff works. Um, now, this is camera two, uh, same process again. Um, and uh, as you can probably see, the color's a little bit different on it. I'm still not entirely sure why that's happening the way that it is, but um, yeah, so it's kind of funny because with this sped up, it looks like I'm just uh, stapling the, <laughs> the, uh, the piece. Um, like I said, this is a little bit different color scheme here on the camera. This is the same colors as what I was using before. Although in this particular one, I'm going to be using um, highlight paints a little bit later on in the, the clip here um, to do the plasma reactors um yeah leave, leave something in the comments if you like the way this looks other than the bright chromoscape that i was doing before um yeah i can totally do that i know how to do that now um this way shows a little bit better to um as far as how i'm working the paint um but anyways yeah at the end of this one uh i'll be uh doing the highlighting on the plasma coils. Oh, here it is. Now we start out with a, uh, a very bright green, um, a lot of yellow into it. And then I'm going to be using yellow towards the center. Now you see me feathering it all out here. These are two separate brushes that I use. I use one to apply and then one to feather. Um, and I'm going to be putting a streak of yellow down the middle of this to highlight the end. Now you can see I'm going all across I'm trying to do a little bit of object source lighting, um, which is a different kind of exercise with something like this, because I actually have the object, um, <laughs> which is a little different than when you do miniature object source lighting. Yeah, this, that looks really nice, actually. Um, pretty happy with the way that worked. Um, and when we split here, okay, so uh, I decided uh, I'd do a split screen here. Um, like I said, a little bit new video. Leave in the comments whether you like the way that this looks or it's confusing to you. Um, 
There's a few scenes here where you get a double good shot of the back of my head. Um, but we're just continuing to moss things up and sump things up a little bit more before I start adding the real special effects stuff, the slimes and things like that. But uh, uh, I'll let you guys uh, watch and uh, I'll come back a little later. Um, we're speeding along here. Um, this is an awful great way to paint things. Um, because I have such a color shift, you know, gray to green, it totally looks like I'm putting a ton of paint on this. Um, this is very, very little bit of paint and we're just spreading it even thinner. Um, I, I kind of... Uh, well, it's kind of like spreading really not enough butter on too much bread. If if it feels like you're doing that, you're doing this correctly. Because if at this point, like I said, there's no thinning or anything going on with these paints. Um, so if you know the thicker you put it on there, the longer it takes for everything to dry. Um, so what you're just doing is you're taking little dabs of paint, and I've seen several people do this different ways. They dab several colors at once and then use the brush to stroke it in. Um, and, and you know, they self mix as they go. You can highlight, you can do OSL with it. You can do um, non-metallic metal look if you want. Um, all of those are, are actually really easy to do with the oil paints. The, like I said, the, the big trick is to get past the drying time. And that really has everything to do with how you uh, organize your projects. Um, I do these great big gigantic things, um, not all the time, but uh, you know, this, this is gonna take a while anyways, and there's no point in rushing any part of it. Um, you know, I, I, I use these materials that I'm using on this to uh, facilitate some speediness of this instead of and on cost effective too. Um, yeah, I purchased sixty dollars of the oil paints almost two years ago now, and I haven't even gone through a quarter of it yet. And I do projects like this pretty regularly. Um, you can see where the colors change in, but uh, yeah, this is just you start getting into a groove here, and you just lose track of time. Um, and it just it's so peaceful. Um, uh, anyways, uh, I'll get back, let you get back to watching it. And uh, when we switch my stylings up, I'll uh, come back on and explain.
Okay, so um, now we're going to do the parts. Um, and, you know, I had thought a couple different ways of doing this part of the project. Because, you know, you, you like to have all this stuff, you know, seam together. Like, you know, you didn't do it separately and then glued it together. Um, so the way I figured I was going to do this was we were going to do a little bit of this stuff and just set up the piece right away. Um, there's an end shot. Um, not glued down of everything yet. I'm still not quite ready for that, but a uh, little bit more um, the moss and the, you know, the slime, you know, I imagine that this kind of an area to be just absolutely, you know, got toxic stuff growing around in it all the time. So basically what's going on right here is I'm taking each individual part and I'm placing it and then putting this kind of an effect based upon the placement of where it is. Um, so this will be pretty much one at a time wherever this stuff's going to go on to. Um, this is kind of where some of those bright colors that I came or started out with a couple of videos ago. Uh, that's where this comes into play so you can actually see, you know, what the base colors were supposed to be. Um, it gives a nice different effect. It's kind of shadowing. It's not really, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the artist term is, but uh, here's the second piece with the posters on it. But uh, anyways, I'll let you guys get back to watching. Okay, so now we're on to the second kind of oil painting that I've been doing, which is kind of like the wall pieces. Um, this is a little thicker, and basically this is the rusting, or the beginning of the rusting. The highest colors of the rusting are going to be done with weathering powders later. But right now I wanted to get a good base of the dilapidated look. Um, so basically what you have is you have... Um, not quite as thick a mixture as what I did when I uh, did all the separate tiles and then wiped them off with a sponge. It's a little thinner than that. But what you do is you place spots of this color in areas and then you dip into uh, thinner and pretty much push it around. Um, you can see kind of how I'm doing it there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically a blotch and then you get you know, and then you push it around. It's, it's no other way for me to explain it. Um, it's a very, very, 
a nice step, especially for the beginning of weathering, uh, rusting effects and things like this. Now, um, there's, I, I could go back to typhus corrosion and maybe the AK stuff. Um, this is just, once again, oil, paint, and thinners. Uh, there's, there's hardly any money involved in doing this. And this stays, you know, active for a while. You know, I mean, this dries faster than the, the moss that I just did. But pretty much in three days, everything's dry um, for the most part, uh, either way. So, you know, you have three days to adjust, you know, what you want to do. Um, but with this step, when I after I got done with this, I did let it dry for a little while before I went on to the next step, which is going to be the detailing. Um, and I'll show you what I do with that coming up here.
Yeah, so anyways, the shots I threw up on Facebook are right after I did this step. So the next steps that's going on here, I was trying to videotape this, but yes, if you can see, I'm doing a little OSL with lighting there. Um, we're also going to be adding the eyes uh, and a lot of the red lights that are going along in here. We're also going to be working on other uh, plasma effects and television screens and that kind of stuff. Basically, you're putting it on dry um, and you're feathering it out, uh, kind of like what I did with the wall. This is a little bit more uh, pigment. Um, these colors are a bit more sharp. Um, I hope you can pick it up in the... Uh, in the video here um, and uh, yeah this is really the first of the detailing starts we're starting to get to that point here where um, you know the next video is coming up it's gonna be graffitiing postering more and uh, weathering powders um, there's a couple of other things, but not very much left. We are almost done here. Um, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough at the end here. Um, and it's kind of a slower walkthrough. I think I'm going to try to add some soupy music to it instead of the you know, normal little upbeat rhythms I've been rolling with. But uh, thanks so much, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited about how many people are watching the videos now. Um, any questions at all or any comments criticism it doesn't matter we can we can handle all of them um yeah uh just put them down down in the comment section and we'll get to them as they come uh you guys have a great night thank you <laughs>